welcome to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast. Joined today by Bendu Yaney from Arizona Women's Basketball. Bendu, thanks for being here. Thanks, thanks for, for having joining me. us. Absolutely. Great to have you here. Now, Bendu Yaney, mm-hmm. there's got to be a story behind that first name. What is it? So it's my mom's mom's name, so my grandma's name, and it means beautiful in Liberian. Um, and my mom, my grandma had passed away before I was born, so my mom just decided to give me that name. And so, because I'm the last baby in the in the family too, so it, it kind of goes together. Beautiful in Liberian, I like mm-hmm. it. That's that's an awesome story. Now, Bendu, you're originally from Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Uh, you originally committed to Indiana and then came to Arizona before last season. But talk to me a little bit about growing up in Portland, Oregon. Mm-hmm. What's it like as a basketball town? What was it like for you growing up there? Um, it was a lot of competition. Um, we had a lot of different stars in our like in our Portland area. Um, a lot of different people went different places. Um, so it was a lot of talent everywhere. Um, there was just like the Portland Trailblazers. You know, I, while I was growing up, they were our big team. Um, I think they went to the Western Conference Finals a couple of years ago. And um, I mean, it's just fun to be able to watch them and you know just see what they've done for the community and just you know be able to be a part of it too. And you can't talk Portland in basketball without talking about Dame Lillard, yeah. Dame Dalla. Mm-hmm. As a basketball player and as a figure of that city, what has he meant to you and other other young people playing basketball in Portland? Um, he's meant the world, honestly, because of the, I mean, our last superstar was Brandon Roy, um, but him being able to come in the community, he he helps at high schools. Um, I think he helps at one of my, my nephew's high schools, Park Rose, and he also helps at um, Roosevelt High. And he's just been a like a good, uh, like figure for everybody like in the community i think everybody like feeds off of him and you know there was room rumors about him going to different places but i'm just happy that he you know he decided to stay and you know stay and um put on for my hometown now i'm gonna hit you with this one that do your favorite move part of dame's game as a player uh ooh. Um, I'm gonna say his step back. His step back is probably my favorite move. I, I worked on that a lot this summer, and um, I actually know him because I I played against his little sister, so we talked about his step back a little bit with me, and uh, yeah, so I got it kind of kind of down, but not not there yet. <laughs> not not Dame Dollar. Dave. Yeah. Now, uh, we talked earlier about you going to Indiana mm-hmm. at a high school, um, and when you came and decided to transfer and go to Arizona. You took a visit for a home game here in McHale. Do you remember that game? And if so, what do you remember about it? Yep, it was against Stanford and Ari hit the game winner. I think they won by one and it was an overtime game. It was. February 28th, 2020, 73-72. Arizona beats number four, Stanford. Uh, Ari, as you mentioned, hit the game winner. She had 20 points in that game. Shout out to Sam Thomas, 17 points in that game. And Dominique McBride with a 13-10 and double-double. Uh, and that attendance for that game was just under 8,000. What do you remember about the environment from that game? It was going crazy. It was lit. Like, as soon as I walked in, I just felt all the energy. And, you know, throughout the game, the fans was giving the players energy. And that's just something that I really wanted to be a part of. And that was one of the biggest factors committing here. Now, I think it's interesting that you came and visited for a home game that was a historic win for the program with just under 8,000 fans there. But that's the only time you've been in McHale with fans because yeah. last year obviously the COVID yeah. uh, situation we had no fans attended so your first game and your only game so far with fans was a pretty good one <laughs> yeah it was no it was it was very lit I liked it I'm, I'm excited for fans this year what about that environment do you look forward to the most now that we're going to have fans back in McHale um, just the energy that the fans provide, like, you know, we go out there and play hard, but like, this, the more energy that they give us, we, we feed off of that. And it's hard to play when you have a bunch of fans screaming and, um, you know, especially for us when we're at home, it's, it's easy to play for us, but like for other opponents, it's hard for them. And so we're just excited to be able to have that back and have that aspect and just protect our home court. So as the season went on last year, uh, the NCAA tournament in San Antonio, in the bubble, in the uh, bubble for like a month. Yeah. Uh, you know, just trying to keep it locked down with, with COVID. Um, in that run, you had to face your old team, Indiana, and you yeah. had the perfect line of it was just another game. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and Arizona would win that game, beating Indiana. Ari McDonald goes off in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, 33, 11, and a four. Pretty good day at the office right there. <laughs> what do you remember specifically about her run in that tournament and that game in particular? Well, in that game in particular, she she 
been able to play against her old, uh, her former teams before. And so she just kind of told me like, uh, she has my back and I got hers. Like, and that's, that's how they was going to go down. Um, but overall, like when she was playing in that game, it was like watching a video game. It was crazy. Like how she was, all the moves she was doing. Like I've seen it before in practice and stuff, but like to see it in a game and to see it, how like dominant she was, it was just like spectacular. To that point, we talk about how she, it was like 2K. She was playing 2K. It was yeah. like, I played with Dame on 2K. Ari was going for full 2K in that game. No, as well. literally. And the entire tournament run. Yeah, no, the whole tournament run, it was just crazy to watch her just from the start. The first game, she, you know, she, she didn't have, like, she wasn't fully ready the first game. The second game, the third game, the fourth game, all the way to the championship. After that, you know, she was, she was all thought, full throttle. Now, obviously, you move on to the, from that game to, uh, a game against UConn in the Final Four. Mm -hmm. Arizona reaches the Final Four for the first time, draws the most historic, iconic program maybe in the history of women's college basketball. Uh, obviously a great night for the Cats. The exclamation point in that convincing 10-point victory came from you, mm -hmm. if you remember that play and, yeah. and the last bucket of the game and, and what happened on that one. Um, I mean, I was in, I was just trying to get the ball. I didn't want them to score no more. Um, and she was just dribbling down the court and I saw the opportunity to kind of like poke at it. Um, cause I have long arms, so I was able to poke at it and, and I got it loose and I was like, oh, yep, we're going to lay this up. And I think it ended up being a 10 point game. And so it was, it was, it felt good that like after that basket went in that we knew we were going to win and everything. Yeah. The, the rip in the bucket for you makes it a 69 59 with 10 seconds left. Um, as I said before, the exclamation point on a historic win. Mm -hmm. And that brings you to the national championship game, yeah. playing Stanford, a team you'd already played before in the season and also in the Pac-12 tournament. What was going through your mind when the moment changed from we just beat UConn to now we're playing Stanford in the national championship? Honestly, it changed right after the game, um, especially because we saw that Stanford was in the championship right before we played UConn anyways. So we kind of just like it flipped because we we didn't get the opportunity to play them in the Pac-12 tournament because of the fact that we ended up losing to UCLA. Um, but we were in the standings, we were first and second. So everybody kind of like predicted that we we're going to play them in the, the Pac-12 championship. So it was like we kind of had a rematch because we already played them twice and we lost the, those twi the two games before that. And so it, it felt like a rematch and that's how we were looking at it and everything. Unfortunately, we lost by one, but I mean, it was a good game. We had the opportunity to win it all. It just fell short. It was an all Pac-12 national championship game. Mm -hmm. As somebody who grew up in the Pac-12 footprint, what did that mean to you to see the Pac-12 had the two best teams in the tournament? I mean, it just shows that the Pac-12 is one of the best in the country, if not the, the best in the country. And I think a lot of people on the East Coast and the Midwest, you know, the Southern side, like they think they have the best, you know, conference. But it just shows like if you have two teams on the, in the same conference playing in the champ national championship game, like you can't you can't debate about that. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And the next day after the, the national championship game, the team and your, and your teammates and yourself all return back to Arizona Stadium. We have like 5,000 mm -hmm. fans in the stands to welcome you guys back. Yeah. Uh, parade style almost, as it were. Mm -hmm. How did that moment impact you? How, did you? how do you reflect back on that moment now? Um, it was it was wonderful. You know, at that time, we were all sad. Like, when we got on the plane, on the bus, we were sad. But just being able to come back and seeing how, how proud everybody was of us and, like, how much we changed the community and, you know, how many more fans we ended up, you know, bringing in for our team and just women's basketball in general. Like, it was just – it was a fun experience. And, like, looking back, it was – it was probably the happiest moment of probably my life just because of the fact that, like, I, I know that I changed other people's lives. And you've talked about this before, but sort of the surreal moment realization throughout that tournament run was when things started blowing up on social media. Yeah. Megan Rapinoe's tweeting, LeBron's tweeting. Um, you know, you, you and your teammates are waking up all of a sudden. It's like Instagram's going up. There he goes from 8,000 to 50,000 followers. Yeah. People get verified. Yeah. You on verified <laughs> IG. Yeah. <laughs> good, good moment for you, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Is there a single interaction or a single tweet or social media post that you look back at now and go like wow that was surreal um honestly it's all of them i had a couple of timberwolves players tweet at me i got a, had a couple of boston celtics tweet at me um but yeah just in general like just everything that's happened like i think it, every day was an adventure like we knew like something new had happened every day so like i can't just pick out one thing i think it's just the whole the whole month that we were there it was just it was always something every day so that was the conclusion of your first season here in Arizona. 
Um, obviously, as we talked about before, you, you came on a visit, saw a great game, historical win. When you look back at last season as a whole and playing for Coach Barnes, what did you expect going into it? And then what did you learn about her or grow to appreciate from her coaching style as the year kind of went on? Um, well, I didn't really have any expectations because I just, I mean, when you go to a new school, a new coach, you don't really, you don't want to have expectations because then you don't want to have it go down. Like, you know, so I didn't really have expectations. I just knew that she's a good uh, people person and that's something I like out of, per or out of a coach. Um, but things that I learned is that she's very straightforward. What she wants is what she wants. And if you do it wrong, you're going to do it again. Um, but other than that, she's a, she's a player. She likes listening to her players. And so like in the tra whole championship run, you know, she was listening to us and we were listening to her and that's why it looked like we we're, you know, we we're so in sync with her because she, she would hear what we were, we were seeing on the floor and let us like basically kind of play. But then, you know, in the huddle, she would tell us what we, what she wants and we'll do it. But then at the same time, she's listening to us and we're having that good back and forth. So since that, that tournament run and we're now coming up on your first exhibition of this upcoming season. Mm -hmm. Besides the Dame Step Back, what else have we been working on with the game? What else have you been focusing on to improve? Um, well, one, I've been focusing on my free throws because 50% last year was not, that did not cut it <laughs> at all. And I've been a better free throw shooter my, all my career, so I don't know what happened last year. But I've been working on that. And then like my, just my jump shot and then like three point shot, um, just to be more consistent because I feel like I do have a nice jumper. It's just, I was just more hesitant last year than, than the past years so i think i have i've worked on my confidence with that so okay now we're gonna play a little a new game here with you bendu okay. uh we're gonna do kind of a little word association for it because i want to have you provide a scouting report about the rest of your teammates okay. and that sort of stuff so if you're game let's yeah let's, let's do let's, it let's have a go here at it so i'm gonna give you a teammate mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna go through uh returners all those folks even new transfers and some of the freshmen Okay. You just say, give me a one word description about it. Okay. So I'll, I'll give you a couple seconds to think about it. We'll start with returners. Okay. By class. Okay. All right. So if I say Samaja Smith, what do you say? Shot blocker. Kate Reese. Energetic. <laughs> Sam Thomas. Uh, three point assassin. Ben Duyani. Uh, <laughs> uh, shoot, I don't know about, about myself. Um, come back to me. Come back to me. <laughs> Ryan Copeland. Oh, uh, bucket getter. Shayna Pellington. Fastest one on the court. Helena Pueyo. Oh, another three point assassin. Corey Love. Oh, uh, flashy. Taylor Chavez. Ooh, uh, three-point killer. Of all the folks we've already discussed so far, toughest guard for you in practice? Shayna. She's so fast, and, like, I, yeah, you can, it's hard to stay in front of her. In, in full court, you can't stay in front of her. In half court, it's, it's difficult, too. Okay, so let me keep going here. All right. Go, go back to the post. Lauren Ware. A uh, gold medalist. Darren Ergendon. <sighs> Saucy. Saucy with the handles. Saucy from Turkey. Yep. So now we're getting into some of these newcomers. Gisela Sanchez. Ooh. Um, she's flashy, too. She will hit you with the no looks. So she's, she's super flashy. Okay. Another taste of Portland, Oregon here. Aaron at Von Lay. Oh, strong body in the paint. Madison Connor. Oh, she's, she's a bucket. Another three-point assassin. <laughs> All right. And Anna Gret. Oh, she's saucy and like don't if you guard her, just watch your ankles. Watch so, your ankles. The Bendu Yeni Sky Report has a lot of sauce and a lot of three point assassins. Yep. Which means that should be pretty good on the offensive end. Mm-hmm. All right. We're gonna Oh, I could put for me, I could put defensive uh defensive um specialist. Defensive specialist for Bendu yeah, Yeni. That's the Sky me. Report. Yep. All right. So we obviously we've gone through the Sky Report. We've got uh a core group of returns like yourself coming mm -hmm. back this season, Bendu, and some new transfers and some freshmen. And the first chance fans are going to get a chance to see you all come together on the court. October 28th, no. Eastern New Mexico exhibition, back in McHale. You'll finally get your first game on the court with fans in yep. McHale. We're all excited for it. How excited are you for that? I'm super excited. I think my team is super excited too, just to be on the court and just be able to play games again and have a full arena. 
You heard it right there, folks. Ben Duyeni on the Bear Down Podcast, October 28th, Eastern New Mexico, Arizona Women's Basketball, back in Mikhail.